Hey, New Life Church, my name is Sydney Tier, and if you've been following along, then you know we are studying the life of David, and today we are in 2 Samuel chapter 20. So, let's jump on in. Um, so, starting right at the beginning of the chapter, it says, Now there happened to be a worthless man whose name was Sheba, a Benjaminite. He blew the trumpet and said, We have no portion in David. We have no inheritance in the son of Jesse. Every man to his tents, O Israel. So I love to paint a picture in my mind. And I picture just this, I mean, mass crowd. Like so many people. Sheba, a worthless man, scripture says, stands up, blows the trumpet and says, Hey, there's no future for us here. There's no future for us with David. So let's get out of here. And everyone like rises and walks away and leaves. Like just total desertion, right, of David. And then scripture goes on to say, continuing in verse two, but the men of Judah followed their king steadfastly. I love that word. Steadfastly from the Jordan to Jerusalem. So all the men of Israel withdrew. All of them deserted deserted David. But one, the tribe of Judah, decided to stay. And it says that they steadfastly followed So remember all the tribes, all the people, and only one chose to follow. A worthless man, too, as scripture says. So it's like, that can't be good. (laughs) But the rest of the chapter continues with a lot of chaos and a lot of destruction and a lot of death. And let me just say, sometimes, maybe I'm just talking to myself, but sometimes passages like these are really hard for me to read. And they're really hard for me to totally understand um, maybe what I should be learning from this passage, right? And I just want to say that there are so many good resources out there. Um, You don't just have to read the word and just, well, I didn't understand any of that. So there goes that. (laughs) There's so many good resources out there. And so that's what I had to do is I had to look up some commentaries, um, reading some things in my study Bible to see what I could find um, just to learn more about this passage. And a common theme that I kept seeing in in different commentaries and in my study Bible was the word loyalty. And I love that because it continued to bring me back to the beginning um, where the desertion of the tribes, which I'm sure was very distressing, but the loyalty of the men of Judah, like how powerful is that, right? So when others desert and divide, just like in this story, it gives greater opportunity to demonstrate loyalty. So we see so much division in our culture today, right? People on this side and people on this side, they are showing where their loyalty lies and it's on their side, right? We should imitate loyalty that Judah showed to their king, to our king, to King Jesus, who's the better shepherd, the greatest shepherd and the greatest king. So when thinking about this for me and for my daily life, this may not look like I find myself in some, you know, mass riot or mutiny or something like that. But what does loyalty to Jesus look like in my daily life? And for me, it looks like, you know, sinful acts or just deliberate disobedience that goes against my loyalty to him, that opposes loyalty to Jesus. Because I'm saying, I'm going to follow this and not you, Jesus. I'm going to oppose. I'm going to be, I'm going to follow this act that I know is disobedient. And that shows where my loyalty lies, right? Uh, In Matthew chapter six, it talks about that you can't serve two masters. Um, You can't serve both God and money. Um, I think that's in verse chapter six, verse 24. Yeah, no one can serve two masters, for either he will hate one and love the other, or he will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. And I thought about that verse, and I thought about, okay, so many things we could put in there in place of that. I cannot serve both God and blank. Because when I serve over here and not God, then that shows that my loyalty is lying with something else that it definitely should not, right? Um, In spite of the multitude, whether it's the popular opinion or not, we remain loyal and we steadfastly follow our King Jesus. In spite of our rebellious heart and our rebellious flesh, hello, (laughs) we remain loyal to Jesus. 
In spite of the times when he seems distant, we still remain loyal. Just because something is close or as tangible or as easy doesn't make it the right choice, right? Even when he seems distant, we still remain loyal to him and to our King Jesus because that is where life is. So I hope that was encouraging to you today. Thanks so much for letting me share and we'll see y'all soon.